Bruchem Aboim. Again, welcome everyone uh, again to our home. Thank you for attending. Again, we're in the middle of our uh, Amida series, and uh, this is a deeper understanding of the Amida. Again, this will be the fourth lecture. Now, this week on my thoughts, I'd like to continue our in-depth discussion of the third blessing in the Amida, which is called Atta Kadosh, You Are Holy. This blessing concludes the three blessings of praise that introduce each and every Amida that we recite every day of the year. The blessing alludes to Yaakov Avinu, um, Jacob our father, who is considered by our sages to be the, the greatest of the forefathers. Our sages tell us that Avram Abraham our father, uh, is compared to gold. Yitzhak of Avinu, Isaac our father, he's compared to silver. And Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, is compared to brass. Now it seems strange, really, that Yaakov Avinu, who is considered to be the greatest of the forefathers, would be compared to brass and not to gold. The comparison is really very logical. You see, since both gold and silver are metals that melt under <clears throat> intense heat, whereas brass retains its form even when subjected to high temperatures. This is the reason that brass pots and pans are used in cooking rather than gold or silver. In addition, we see that when brass is polished, it shines much like gold does. Now, the three patriarchs, it is Yaakov, whose life was the most challenging. He was forced to interact with his older brother, Esau, and his father-in-law, Laban, both of whom desired to kill him. He suffered the rape of his daughter, Dina. In addition, for 22 years, he mourned the loss of his favorite son, Yosef, not knowing whether he was dead or alive. Then his favorite wife, Rachel, was the first of his wives to die in childbirth. Yet after all was said and done, he was the only one of the patriarchs to father 13 children, all of whom were righteous individuals. They were the progenitors of the tribes of the children of Israel, those honored to become God Almighty's chosen nation. The Avudraham stated that as the third of the patriarchs, Yaakov Avinu forged a Jewish people into one indivisible unit, fulfilling King Solomon's statement in Kohelet, Ecclesiastes, that a three-braided cord is not easily severed. Yaakov's greatness developed through his ability to blend the trait of his grandfather Avraham, kindness, with the trait of his father Yitzhak, which was severity. You know, the world cannot survive on either trait exclusively. A world that would be based on only kindness would have no boundaries, which would allow it to be too permissive. And a world based on only severity would be too restrictive and inflexible, which would cause it to be oppressive to the masses. Yaakov's trait was emet, which means truth. As it states in Micha, titain emet le Yaakov. He, alluding to God Almighty, gave truth to Yaakov. The word titain is derived from the Hebrew word matana, which means a gift. It is used here since truth is not something that a person can acquire by their own powers. Truth, this was a gift from God Almighty himself. It was Yaakov Vina who was able to employ this gift to, and to blend the traits of kindness and severity together and form them into one entity. Knowing when to use the back of the hand to discipline and the front of the hand to caress. When kindness and justice complement each other, the result is emet, truth. The prayer begins with the word ata, which means you. This word is presented in the second person to indicate our close and special relationship with God, our Father in heaven. You know, we acknowledge that God is holy, but at the same time we recognize that we have no idea what that really means. This can be compared to, you know, a little child trying to understand their parent, who is a nuclear scientist. If you were to ask the child, what does your father do? He would answer, my father is a nuclear scientist. If you then asked him, well, what does that mean? <laughs> he would just shrug his shoulders. What he actually is saying is that what, that was what he was told, which is beyond, again, his understanding. He's just parroting the words. 
so too with God Almighty, our benevolent Father in Heaven. All that we know about God is His name, something that is really superficial. It is beyond our ability to even begin to understand His essence. As God told Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, in the portion of Kisisa where Moshe actually asked God to see His essence, God replies that a man cannot have a vision of me and live. The next word in the blessing is kadosh, which is translated as holy. It is also used to signify something that has great sanctity and is separated from the mundane. This is why the, the marriage between a man and a woman is referred to as kadushin, a holy union that binds a man and woman to each other in a state of holy matrimony. Kadosh has a gematria, a numerical value of 410. Our sages tell us that it was only during the first temple, which stood for 410 years, that the Shechina, that the divinity of God manifested itself in a revealed state in his house. There were ten open miracles that, were, that are listed in Pirkei Avot, the ethics of the fathers, that were witnessed daily by those who attended the temple service. This was not the case with the second temple, which did not reach the same level of kedusha of sanctity, as did the first. The prayer continues with the words, Ukedoshim b'chol yom selo. And the holy people praise you every day. Now, the Eim Tefillah states that this may be referring to the celestial angels who praise God Almighty daily. However, most commentaries agree that these words refer primarily to the children of Israel to whom God applied this title to. As it states in the second verse in the portion of Kedoshim, where it states, Kedoshim Tihiyu, that you shall be holy, for I, Hashem your God, am holy. Now, every day the angels in heaven proclaim that God's, that God's level of holiness is unsurpassed. This is expressed when they recite the word Kadosh, holy, three times. We follow their example when we recite the Kedusha, imitating the stance of the angels as we stand erect with both of our feet together. Now, the highest level of angels are only permitted to praise God Almighty once daily. There are other angels that only praise God Almighty once in their whole existence. We, on the other hand, are honored and privileged and that we are allowed to praise God, our benevolent Father in heaven, three times daily. The highest level of serving God Almighty is called Mesirat Nefesh, which is generally referred to as martyrdom. These words can be translated literally, though, as transferring one's life over to God. A great rabbi once said, you know, that it is much easier to die once for the sanctification of God's name rather than to live daily for the sanctification of God's name. Rabbi Yerucham Levavitz noted that the Talmud on occasion refers to a person who lives their life according to the dictates of God Almighty as one who is a partner with him in the creation of this world. He goes on to explain that the reason that the great tzaddikim, righteous individuals, were able to change the natural order by performing miracles through their prayers was because they achieved a status of being partners with God Almighty in the operation of this world. You know, they tell a story about the Opta Rebbe, Rebbe Avram Yeshua Heschel of Opt, who was told about a certain innkeeper who possessed the ability to bless people. He was concerned as to where this power originated. Was it from the side of good or was it from the side of evil? And so he went to the inn to investigate. When he came to the inn, you know, he took a seat in the corner and observed Moshe, the innkeeper, uh, to see if there was anything special or unusual that he could ascertain. What he saw was that Moshe was just an innkeeper. He did what any innkeeper would do. He waited on his clientele, taking care of their requests. The after Rebbe noticed, though, that Moshe had two drawers in which he placed the money that he collected from his patrons. But other than that, there really was nothing unusual that he saw that would explain Moshe's unique ability to bless people. He, he waited till all the customers had left the inn and then he approached Moshe. He introduced himself and told Moshe about his concern. 
He asked Moshe, how was it that he was able to bless people? He warned him that if his power came from the side of evil, that he would be forced to place a curse upon him. Moshe assured the after Rebbe that his ability to bless came directly from God Almighty himself. He told the Abdu Rebbe that years ago he was having financial difficulties. His wife suggested that he should leave town and look for a partner. So he packed up a few belongings and began his search to find such a person. When he reached the end of town, well, he stopped at a big oak tree. He said, you know, I looked up to heaven and I said to God Almighty, my benevolent Father in heaven, now, my wife wants me to find a partner. What better partner could I have than you? So I said to God, you know, from this day on, you and I will be partners. With that, I slapped my thighs and I said, well, it's a deal. We'll be partners. When I slapped my thigh, I, I felt something hard in my pocket. And to my surprise, when I reached into my pocket, I found a gold coin. Well, I was certain that I didn't have anything in my pocket before I left home, especially not a gold coin. I took the coin as a sign from heaven that God had accepted my offer of a partnership. So ever since that day, I keep two cash registers, one for God and one for myself. God has kept up his part of the bargain. And from that day on, I have been successful. However, I noticed a strange phenomena. Whenever I would give someone a blessing, amazingly, the blessing would come true. The Abdur Rebbe smiled and told Moshe, that our sages tell us that on various occasions, the Talmud, such as in the Tractate of Shabbat, refers to a person who lives according to the dictates of God Almighty as one who is a partner with God in the creation of this world. He explained that a partner is not an employee, but an owner. Thereby, a partner has the right to express an opinion on the operation of the business. Now, his opinion may be overruled, but unlike a hired worker, he can always insist that his opinion be at least heard. This is where your power of blessing originates, he said. And with that, he kissed Moshe on the head and told him, keep up the good work. The blessing ends with the words, Baruch Ata Hashem HaKel HaKadosh. Blessed are you, Hashem, the Holy God. You know, the blessing begins and ends with the Hebrew word, Kadosh, holy. It is God Almighty's hope and wish that we strive to reach a level of Kedusha, holiness, as it states in the portion of Yisrael. And you shall be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The word Hakel, the God, has a gematria, a numerical value of 36. The number 36 is twice the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word Chai, which means life, which makes, again, which has a gematria, a numerical value of 18. This alludes to the fact that he is the creator, the source of all life, both in this world and in the next. When adding the numbers together, th three and six, well, they equal nine. The word emet, truth, has a gematria and value of 441. When you add these numbers across, four, four, and one, they equal nine. The number nine is allusion to truth. If you multiply any number times 9, it will always equal 9. For example, 2 times 9 is 18, 1 and 8 is 9. 5 times 9 is 54. 5 and 4 is 9. Truth never changes. So the word hakel is an allusion to God who is the ultimate truth. This is also an allusion to Yaakov Uvino, who emulated his creator, whose trait is emet. If we were to move the letter hey from the beginning of the word, hakel, and place it at the end of the word, it would spell the word ela, which means these are. The last two words in this blessing would then be read as ela hakadosh, which would mean that these are the holy ones, telling us that not just Yaakov, but that all three of the patriarchs are all holy. They are all partners with God Almighty in perpetrating and sustaining his world. To a person who lives only in the secular world, success is measured by how much they have acquired, how much they take from this world. However, to a person who also lives in the religious world, success is measured by how much they give from this world. As the saying goes, a wise man gives and a fool takes. So in essence, God Almighty is the creator of the world. He is not 
only holy, but he is also unique and unknowable. There is no way for us to fathom his greatness. We can only stand in awe as we view all the miracles and wonders that he has and continues to perform for everything that exists in his magnificent world. The children of Israel compared to the moon. Just like the moon waxes and wanes, so too the history of the Jewish nation has followed the same scenario. We bless the new moon every month as it begins to wax. According to Jewish folklore, there is a belief that the so-called man in the moon is viewed as Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father. There is an allusion to this thought that is connected to the opening words in the third prayer that we recite when we observe Kiddush Levana, the blessing of the new moon. The prayer begins with four terms of blessings. It states, Borach Osech, Borach Yotzech, Borach Borech, Borach Konech, which translates to mean, blessed is our maker, blessed is he who formed you, blessed is your creator, and blessed is your master. If you take the first letter of these four statements, it forms an acronym of the name Yaakov. It is he who is seen as the greatest of all the forefathers. Thereby, it is not coincidental that we are referred to as the children of Israel, a special name that was given to Yaakov by God Almighty himself. With these words, we have concluded the first section of the Amidah, which introduced the praise of God, our benevolent Father in heaven. The next prayer opens with the 13 personal requests, the first of which with a crest for knowledge. The Jerusalem Talmud in the Tractate of Brachot tells us that if there is no intellect, there can be no discernment and separation. The only reason why man was given intellect was to be able to recognize and appreciate that there is a God in the world and that we should serve him with love and with awe. So let us all pray to God Almighty that he brings a swift and decisive end to the war in Gaza with a complete victory over Hamas and all the evil that exists in the world today. May he bring home safely all the hostages, cure all the sick and injured, comfort all the mourners, and bring home safely all the brave IDF soldiers led by Mashiach Sukainu quickly and in our time, and let it be now. Again, I want to thank you for listening and attending. Thank you very much. God should bless you and yours with only good, happiness, health, and safety. Again, please, if you have not yet done so, please push the um, a like button, subscribe button, and please share with your friends. Uh, tonight, again, there will not be a musical rendition after this. Again, this uh, Tisha B'Av just ended, so we'll start again, hopefully, with that next week. Again, God bless you all, and thank you for listening. Shabbat Shalom. God bless you.